HBO's made some official announcements around House of the Dragon Season 2. We're going to get into what HBO has released, and we're going to do it right now on the Sundowners Club. House of the Dragon Season 2, we've covered the production, the on-location shooting around it, some of the rumors around what the story arcs are going to be, which we have a good idea for those who have read Fire and Blood. You haven't read the book, so we've, we've kept some of those things from, from the audience uh, but HBO has made a few announcements, and we want to cover those. And the first is the release date is scheduled for summer 2024. Normally, when we get an announcement around a release of a show, especially the number one series or a top three series on a, on a network like HBO and HBO Max, along with The Last of Us and Euphoria and Succession, some of the others, House of the Dragon was a major hit and a comeback since Game of Thrones left the air. and Normally, we get a date like August, which is when House of the Dragon Season 1 came out. But they said summer 2024. And I think we talked about that on a prior video, how with the writer strike, House of the Dragon was one of the few shows or series that were filming throughout the strike. And they are done with principal photography. They are in the editing and post-production as we speak. So I thought that was interesting. I wanted to highlight the HBO announcement via Variety around summer of 2024 because that to me means that they're leaving the door open for August, July, June, maybe even May. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of the Game of Thrones series were released in April um, going into the last two seasons. So what do you think about, first of all, House of the Dragon Season 2 being released maybe earlier in the summer potentially versus the traditional August? I mean, does it think it makes a difference in what the ratings will be or the interest? I don't think so. I mean, with the way people consume content, I mean, back in the day it mattered because you had to watch something at a certain time. You know, it started or, or at 9 you had to wait. Are yeah. you are you are you missed it? Now, or you recorded it? Yeah, yeah. Are you are you recorded it? But now it's streaming, it's you can watch it whenever. So I mean, you know, yeah, I don't think it's that big of a deal. You know, even if they did it in June or July when people are traveling, I don't I don't think it's going to affect it much. I think this notion that everybody thinks that everybody's out of town you know, not watching TV. I just don't yeah. think that's true. If it's if it's got a buzz and it's good, you know, people are going to find it. Yeah. And they're definitely going to find House of the Dragon on, on HBO and HBO Max. And so another thing that was announced, not too surprising, but officially announced is they, they went through the official cast list. Mm -hmm. And so we got the usual suspects that we know are going to be back. We've got Matt Smith as Damon Targaryen. We've got Emma Darcy as Rhaenyra Targaryen. We've got Eve Best as Rhaenys Targaryen. We've got Corliss Valerian returning. Uh, we've we've got um, um, Allison uh, Hightower returning, and uh, uh, we've got all the main suspects. Uh, but there's a few that were left out, and that was somewhat interesting to me, uh, although not shocking. Uh, and at first, we've got the younger versions of Allison Hightower, um, played by Emily Carey, and we've got the young version of Renera Targaryen, who I love the portrayal by Millie Alcott. Now you would say, well, of course, it's not a surprise. Not a surprise. They're 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 not on the cast list because they aged them out halfway through the season. But I don't think it rules out the fact that we could see a flashback in some form or fashion as Renera or Allison are going through these 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 wars. I think they would have announced their casting though. Maybe I I don't I, I don't so. I don't think they you know I don't because they've they've done it before right. uh, in Game of Thrones when somebody is done one season but doesn't appear in another. And so while I think that it's likely we will not see the younger versions of Allison Hightower and Renera Targaryen again for the four seasons that the show is supposed to run, um, it will not surprise me if we see a flashback. Because in the they beginning bring of the show, the actors back. Like they, oh, you're sure. saying they bring Millie Alcott back to do the a flashback scene? Yeah, to do like a to do like a flashback to her and Allison. Maybe a scene that we didn't see. But here's the issue with that. Let's say they did that in the third or fourth season. I mean, like, it does take you out of the of the moment. How much older do you think she's gonna look? As long as yeah, it, you you're know, right. That's the problem with that. So yeah. I mean, well, they could have filmed some scenes with them, the, right. the relationship that they they could cut back to. They could have filmed that in season one, and they just left it on the cutting room floor. So I think that they're out. But here's the one that I want to discuss: Graham McTavish, Sir Harold Westerling, Commander of the King's Guard. So we see him in season one, and he walks out of the scene. He doesn't want to support what's what's going to happen. And you think you're going to see him in season two. He's not on the cast list. So, you know, this is a guy that was an outlander. He's very well known. 
Um, was really liked in, his was, portrayal. Was the character big in the books? Did he have a major part? N- not not big, but he's he's in there. Yeah, um, I mean that's something you saw in Game of Thrones. So you remember uh, Ill and Payne, the guy who executes Ned Stark, and he ends right. up being on Arya's list, and you you think you're going to see him that you're yeah that she's going to get revenge, and then you never see him again. The character's just gone after like the third season, second well, or third season. And, and we're going to get a heavy dose of uh, Sir Chris too. And so when you get into the King's Guard. Uh, and the hand of the king, mm-hmm. those types of characters. I think they want this story to to move, and to have a rhythm to it. And so it's possible we won't see Graham McTavish again. It's possible. I feel like I, I felt like he was going to go to the Blacks and play that yeah. role for well, Rhaenyra. Is without, what I yeah, and, and I don't want to give anything away from Fire and Blood, but you know what people need to understand is they go well. What does it say in the books? The books are told from the point of view of the Maesters, so right. it's a history of. A, B, C, and D happened in Westeros around the Targaryen uh, dynasty. And so the show is telling you what really happened. And so that's important to note that just because something is in the book doesn't mean that the show isn't going to show something different um, or that they may change so something. So could he from pop up standpoint. in season three or you don't think you'll see him again? Uh, uh, you know, I, I think we'll see Graham McTavish again, but I, and I'm 50-50 on it, right. 60-40. Um, I'd like to see him again. I think he's a really good actor. Oh, they could have just recast him. They could have pulled like a mountain. They, they, they could recast that guy three times before we finally got the the last one. Yeah, yeah, and they, and, they, and they recast Dario, which um, that was. They, I like the new guy, but he looked nothing nothing like, like the, the original. Yeah, it kind of so, so there have the been immersion for me. There have been recastings due to scheduling and things like that. And so, just thought that was interesting. Wanted to cover that while we're talking about, you know, House of the Dragon, Game of Thrones. Yeah, I wanted to, to mention something that I think is really cool, and I want to see more of this, even though I hate anything that takes George R. R. Martin away from writing Winds of Winter. But at this point, we we got to take what we can get. So credit to winnerscoming.net. The, they covered the official, this week, the official Game of Thrones Twitter account, and everyone needs to check it out. It's at Game of Thrones on Twitter. I say Twitter, X now as it's known. Mm-hmm. And it is... George R. R. Martin himself talking about the doom of Valeria. And I thought it was really cool. It's an, it's an animated uh, version of events of what happened around the volcano, volcanic eruptions around Valeria. And George R. R. Martin talks about Danis the Dreamer and, uh, and her visions of Valeria falling and the way that the Targaryens escaped Valeria and ended up on Dragonstone. Thought it was really cool. I'd love to see more of this. Let us know what you think. I, I think anytime George R. R. Martin can talk about the the background and the history of this world he created, it's really really cool. He talks about it like it's a real historical event, and it's you know something he just created, which is pretty amazing. You know the yeah the the care and attention he has for the for the events he creates. You know. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it, interesting. yeah, he it, and I don't want to say everything he says in it. It's only like a little over a minute long. You've got to check it out. Again, it's on the the official Game of Thrones uh, X Twitter account. Um, but he talks about obviously the volcanic eruptions that split the, the Valeria into pieces from islands, and uh, it was an environmental de- disaster that caused a, a chain of volcanoes known as the Fourteen Flames to go off all at once. So it's kind of like Pompeii times ten, right. and uh, really cool stuff. I want to see more of that, and I think if they do that, it can lead us into some of the other stories they're going to tell around, like Aegon the Conqueror, seeing what happened with Valeria, and then the birth of Aegon, and leading to his his conquering of Westeros. Mm-hmm. So, really cool stuff. I wanted to just highlight that uh, because it came out this week, and um, anytime you can see George R. R. Martin talking about anything Westeros, uh, we want to cover it. So, let us know what you think. Are you looking forward to House of the Dragon season two? What do you think about Graham McTavish's character, as minor as you may see them uh, returning? Do you think there'll be any flashbacks in season two or beyond that might involve some of the actors that we've discussed? And let us know what you think. Are you looking forward to this show coming out beginning of summer, the end of summer, start of fall? You know, What do you think about some of the potential for the release date to be moved up a little bit? Let us know what you think. Hit the like button. Leave us a comment. Hit the notifications bell. And most importantly, Hit subscribe so that we can continue to grow our channel and TCB.